Mrs. Trimsby? Yes? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, do come in. Do come in. Uh, Mrs. Trimsby, I'm Francis Morris. Oh, dear. Yes, yes. Uh, please, will you come into the dining room? Is my wife in there? No. Oh, dear, no. She likes to be cosy in her room. She expects me, I trust. Shh. There are other people. I told her, of course, that you were coming, but whether she remembers her. She loves her wool. This is such a quiet house, you see. A true home of rest. Our task is to protect and reassure her. She loves her wool. She's so quiet and content, and uh, you haven't, of course, seen her for... You haven't, of course... Morris. I've come to pick him up for the six o'clock train. No, 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 no. I'm Dr. Tringsby. 
I brought him here a couple of hours ago. Yes, yes, but he's gone away. He's not here. But he told me to come back and pick him up. Yes, but he's gone. But my ten bob. He still owes me ten bob. He's taken it with him. Oh! Mrs. Rodney? Yes? My name's Blythe. I am, I was Mr. Morris's lawyer. Ah. Your son wasn't able to come. He's in the army. Yes, right. When we get to the hotel, I would be obliged if you could spare me a few minutes of your time for a private word. Yes. Have you any idea who that man is, by the way? No. Nobody knows him. You a relation to Mr. Morris? He was my husband's cousin. He dropped dead in my house. Can you believe it? We had hardly been introduced. I mean, he'd only been in the house five minutes. Can you imagine? Oh, these are two of my oldest house guests. I brought them out for a little treat. Are you having a nice little treat? Mrs. Rodney, might I have that word? I thought you should know straightway that in his will, Mr. Morris left all his estate to your son, Roderick. There is a trust for his widow, of course, but apart from that, his house, land and capital all go to your son. Good gracious. Here's a copy of the will. As he is still under 21, you are, of course, his guardian. But I can't. They never met. Why do you think... He knew no other young person. I, I believe he wished to leave his estate to a young person in the hope that he may care in his own way to carry on the old tradition. May I get you a cup of tea? Can I get you some port? They do have port here, or at least they call it port. No, thank you. I... Well, there's a bar downstairs. Don't let me stop you. My name is Harrison. You're Mrs. Rodney. Am I right? Yes. I'm sorry, but how do you know my name is Rodney? Well, there's no one else here. It could be you, is there? I've heard your praise has sung a good deal, you see. Who by? Your cousin, Frankie. Oh, you knew him? Oh, yes, very well. I used to go to see him in Ireland. Great old house. Do you remember it? I haven't been there for many years. On your honeymoon, wasn't it? It's to go to your son, I seem to remember. Yes. I... Yes, he told me all about you, old friend. Told me you were a widow, had a boy, everything. He was really very fond of you. He used to talk about you a lot. Did he? But if I'd known that... If I'd known he remembered me, I'd have gone to see him, taken my son. I didn't know, you see. Yes, pity. One so often thinks of things too late. Excuse 
excuse me. First smoker. I'm travelling third. Oh, come on, let's blow the expense. In honour of Frankie. It's on the house anyway. It's not every day, you know, one runs into someone one's been wanting to meet for so long. It's quite an event. What do you do? What do I do? Yes. Government. Yes, I'd like to meet your son. Really? Why? Well, somehow he seems all that's left of old Frankie. Oh. I'd like to get to know you both, as a matter of fact. As a family. I'm sorry, I don't understand... I don't understand your interest in us. Well, I could explain it. I could explain one aspect of it, if you like. I tell you what, when we get to town, why don't I take you home in a taxi and we could have a chat? Yes. I can't hear you. Speak up. they just played on number eight. Can you tell from the programme? Would you like to see my programme? No, thanks. Sorry I spoke. Have we met? How do you mean, met? We don't know each other. I've never seen you before in my life. Then that settles that, then, doesn't it? Why? Are you someone special? I'll know you from now on, anyway. I'll never forget a face. I could easily. Mm -hmm. 
Listen, you'll get into trouble one of these days, tacking on like this. There are some funny people about, don't you know that? I told you, I'm going home. Well, which way do you live? Well, you can go anyway, really. Right, I go this way. You go that way. Yes, that's right. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? I don't know your name. No, you don't. Good evening. Good evening. I found the downstairs door on the latch. Is that in order? I left it open for you. I shut it. That in order, too. Why don't you shut this one? How did you get my telephone number? Oh, I think I met a man who knew you. Look, are you sure this is a convenient time? It's not in the least convenient. No time would be convenient. You said you had something important to say to me. What is it? Mm. All your things are so pretty. Is this your son? Yes. And who is this? Hmm. Yes, this is quite a good likeness. Do you know him? I know of him. Know him by sight. We haven't actually met. By sight? Yes, I've seen him around, you know. Around. Sometimes with you, in fact. I've seen him with you a number of times. Oh, really? That's right, yeah. Will you please tell me what you've come to say? You should be a bit more careful who you know. In general? In particular. I am. I didn't want to know you, for example. Have a cigarette. Yes, Fanny. That doesn't happen very often. Must be being here with you, all on our own. What do you want? Well, I'll tell you. I want you to give me a break, that's all. I want you to let me come here, be here, be in and out of here, on and off all the time. I want to be in your life, as they say, in your life. Except less of that. In fact, none of that at all. No more of that. <laughs> You're a lunatic. No, no, that's simply what I want, you see. That's what I want you to think about seriously. You want me to think about it seriously? Well, yes, I do. Because if you don't, your friend could be in a lot of trouble. As against that, if you and I could 
arrange things between us, things might be arranged. Well, for Christ's sake, get to the point. What the hell are you talking about? Your friend's been playing the fool. He is playing the fool, I should say. Because you know he's at the war office. That's probably all you do know, but I know a little more than that. I'll tell you what he does. He gives information to the enemy. The gist of the stuff he handles is getting through to the enemy. This has been satisfactorily verified. He's working for the enemy. This is silly. I've been watching him, you see. I keep an eye on him. And the way things are, I could tip the scales either way. I think I'd just turn on the stuff I send up or don't send up, you follow me. I'm holding quite a bit of stuff on him. I haven't turned in yet. It doesn't have to go in. They don't know it exists. Perhaps you could help me decide. What I'm saying is this, what finally happens to him rather depends on me. Or when I say it rather depends on me, I mean it rather depends on you. Do you see? Yes, I see. Oh, you do, good. Perfectly. I'm to sleep with you in order that a man be left free to go on selling his country. That's putting it a bit crudely. Anyway, none of this matters because we're not talking about the same man. You are crazy. When did you think this up? You don't believe me? <laughs> no. Why not? If this story were true, if you are what you say you are, would you tell me of all people, knowing I go straight to Robert with the whole thing? What else would you expect? Well, I'd expect someone like you to be more intelligent. If you warn him, and we know you warn him, he's no more used to us, and we pull him in, you see. That's the end of him. So I wouldn't warn him if I were you. What do you mean, we know you warn him? How would you know? I wouldn't tell you. It would stick out a mile. If you warn him, he'll change his timetable. He'll alter his course. He'll throw a smoke screen. We'd know he'd been tipped the wink and we'd pull him in. But if I warn him of that, what if I told him not to change his course in any way? That would take a lot of nerve and some tip-top acting. How much of an actor is he? That's the question. Actor? What do you mean, he's never acted with me? No, no. I suppose not. No. Well, yes. If a man were able to act being in love, he'd be enough of an actor to get away with anything, wouldn't he? Anyway, coming back to where we were, my only point is, if you warned him, you'd sink him. Give me another cigarette. is still shaking. So you're a counter-spy, are you? A key man. What would your employers say, I wonder, if they knew what you were up to? If they knew that by becoming your mistress, I can buy out a man who you say is a traitor to his country? What view would they take of that? Why shouldn't I report you? You would be sorry, you say, if I sank Robert. How would it be if I sank you? You could, absolutely. You could sink me. But it all comes back to the same old thing. If you sink me, you sink him. How dare you touch this photograph? How dare you! Hello? Mother? Roderick! I thought I'd surprise you. I've got a day's leave. Where are you? I'm at King's Cross. Wonderful. Can I stay tonight? Of course. All right, well, it'll take me about 20 minutes or so. Have you eaten? There's nothing... Don't worry. I'll get something with Fred. Oh, right. See you later, then. Yes, as soon as you can. That was my son. He's on leave. He's on his way round here. That's nice for you. Look, there's no hurry about all of this. Take a bit of time. Think it over. You seriously expect me? Oh, you might as well think it over. And if it suited you, I might drop in from time to time. Who knows? I might grow on you.
have a bath? Yes, go on, while I make coffee. Any cake? Biscuits. Are you starving? No, no. Fred knew of a pub that had pork pies. Oh, Robert won't mind if I wear his dressing gown, will he? Of course not. I think I've got a corn. I wish I had something for you to eat. There are only three biscuits. Roderick, is that a corn? I think so. Does it hurt? Absolutely excruciating. I've got a plaster. No, really. I want to ask you something. In Ireland, at the house, my house, there's a river. Yes. Is there a boat? A boat? Don't you know? I haven't been there for 20 years, but I remember the river. Oh, I can picture it. I can see it in my mind's eye. When we go, I'll row you down the river, shall I? If there's a boat. Oh, there must be. Someone's been here. What? Someone's been here. Yes, a man called Harrison. Who's he? No one. A boar. Oh, dear. <coughs> handkerchief. Here's a handkerchief. Thanks. Put it back. What? Put that piece of paper back into the pocket. It's not yours. Just put it back. Oh. Well, why didn't you take it? It might fall out again. It didn't fall out this time. Yes, but it might next time. And, you know... You know what? But it might be important. Top secret or something. Isn't what Robert's doing important? Hey, it isn't yours either. Should we have a peep? See what it says, just for fun. No. Why not? It might be a letter from another woman. Oh, I wouldn't think so. Look. Don't you think it would be best if I just put it back into the pocket? After all, as you said, it's Robert's thing. And it's his pocket. you tell them? I told them you were someone working in a government office and that you like country hikes. Look at these shoes. I like them. Well, they're hardly shoes for a hike. <laughs> Fine, really. Anyway, it hardly matters. You mean we don't have to go for a hike? No. We're free. Quite free. They're harmless, honestly. Anyway, I'll protect you if Mother tries to bite you. Will you? Taxi. We walked from the road. Oh, of course you've come down to walk, haven't you? Ernestine, this is Rodney. <laughs> Mutikins is in the lounge waiting for the sound of a taxi. We were only saying this morning it took being shot in the leg to make Robert walk. See you both at tea. <laughs> what was she laughing at? Oh, just laughing. <laughs> Mutikins is my mother. That's what we call her. Robert. What do you think? 
This is Mrs. Rodney. Mrs. Rodney. How do you do? But what became of the taxi? We walked up the drive. Ernestine was listening for it. Did she miss you? No, we ran into her. Little detraque. It is Saturday afternoon. I hadn't seen you walking up the drive. I should have wondered if you hadn't missed the train. Mrs. Rodney likes to walk in the country. It's so nice to be out of London. I've hardly been up to London since the war began. I've always understood that we're asked not to travel without a good reason. I'm quite content to sit here and knit. My grandson is in the army. Ernestine's boy. So is my son. Roderick. What do you mean by Roderick? Roderick is Mrs. Rodney's son. Oh. Breath of air. Tea will be coming in. Stroll before tea. Just in time. Mrs. Rodney and I forgot to bring our own butter. I don't often eat tea. Well, I suppose I could lend you some of my butter. Really, I don't think you'd stand up in court. You saw that jam. Do you always do that? I mean, do you always use that much jam in London? Sure. I get it on the black market. You might end up in prison. Well, you have to come and visit me in my cell, won't you? We shall be having tears in a minute. If it's not too much trouble, Granny would like some bread. Well, take any. Didn't I give you any? What do those letters on your armlet stand for? It's top secret. Did I see you wearing your armlet outside the gate? We kept undercover. Undercover or not, this is a serious war. You have to obey orders. Now. Ask Mrs. Rodney if she'd like some more tea. If she says yes, pass her cup and don't drop the spoon. Would you? Mrs. Rodney does not care for afternoon tea. Oh, I do drink tea in the office. If it weren't for the children, I should be tempted to do without tea altogether. I mean, drum it out of the house. Mind you, it can become extraordinarily cold here. A fuel shortage. And so one does benefit from a hot beverage. My daughter doesn't feel the cold. She moves about so much, she seldom takes her hat off. Robert tells me that in London you wouldn't notice the war. That's far from the case here, I can assure you. But I'm glad he's enjoying a period of calm. He went through so much. So much. Okay. No, thanks. Why not? Do you think it'll make you fat? Mrs. Rodney's free not to eat cake if she doesn't want to. That's the difference between England and Germany. The Nazis will force her to eat cake. <laughs> Come and see the house. Isn't it time for your walk? 
House first. But there's nothing to see in the house. Honestly, what a waste of a fine afternoon. Mrs. Rodney is interested in interior decoration. I'm afraid we have nothing of that sort here. Then I shall show her my photographs. Won't Mrs. Rodney think you're very vain? Can we come too? No. Go outside and I'll see you from the window. The house is up for sale anyway. Too big. You should warn Mrs. Rodney that the better rooms are all shut up. Because of the war. I don't think you're making a bad impression. I assure you, you're making no impression at all. <laughs> Good gracious. Did you hang all these up? No. But as you see, I haven't taken them down. My mother and Annie put them there. They really must be very fond of you. Oh, no, it's not that. They expect me to be very fond of myself. But are you? I don't think you are. Is this Susanna? Yes. I don't see anything wrong with her. <laughs> and this? Is this your father? Yes. Ah, these socks. Beautiful preserved. What was your father like? He was like Ernest Labrador. Ernest Labrador died halfway through Munich. He was very sensitive. So was my father. He let himself be buckled into his marriage like Ernest Labrador let himself be buckled into his collar. My father's death was a great relief. To me, that is. And probably to him. Don't hold your breath too long. Yes, indeed. I thought you'd gone on your walk until I heard the children shouting. Thank goodness I've caught you. Mutikins has a parcel for you to post in London for Christopher. What's the matter with the post office here? Nothing. But it's closed on Sunday, and in London they're open. Are they? Well, some are. I'd love to post the parcel. But it can wait until we're actually leaving, can't it? Ah, well, you see, A, there's almost always a rush at the last minute, and B, I may have to dash off myself soon. But the point is, there's been a complication. Nobody can find the little half-ounce weight off the weighing machine. Literally nobody. Mutikins is far from sure that she may not have understood the parcel. So the plan is this. She will leave three pennies with the parcel, just in case, on the oak chest in front of the stairs. If you find the parcel is not, repeat, not understood, you can give her back the pennies the next time you're here. Is that clear? Shall I get the children to remind you? No, it's clear. How do you like our gallery? It's quite a... Robert has always photographed well. Crooked again. Did Robert tell you this is our sister Amabel, the children's mother, caught in India for the duration? And this is our father. Oh, he used to radiate such energy and fun. In some ways, Robert takes after him. And that poor fellow was my dog. Yes, so Robert said. He had such faith in human nature. I often think if Hitler could have looked into that dog's eyes, the story might have been very different. Hark, there goes the telephone. Someone's after me. Been waiting long. 
I thought you'd be back now. Huh? I'd rather like a word of it. feel at home. In that case, I shall change my shoes. been in the country, as I expect you know. Were you making the most of the last of the fine weather? What do you mean by that? Were you making the most of the last of the fine weather? How did it go? How did what go? Look, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. I'll be quite happy just sitting here. Why, is this your evening off? I don't quite... Is this business or pleasure? Why don't you tell me what else I've been doing? Well, I know one thing you've been doing, Stella. You've been thinking things over. Have I? Today, you did exactly what I should have done. You went to the first place where rot could start, the home hearth. I wonder what you found. I haven't said anything to him about... Oh, I know that. He hasn't changed his habits, you see. Doing the same things. The only change is you. You're not as natural on the telephone at nights as you used to be. So that's what you do in the evenings. And how'd you get on with your other checkup? On me? I haven't got very far. The point is, not that many people know. What's that? It's a parcel for posting. I should have taken it to the post office. I was too tired. Would you like me to post it for you? Would you? Oh, thank you. That will be one less. Leave it to me. The first time I saw you, you were lying quite like this in Regent's Park. Your eyes were shut. Then you opened your eyes and you looked up at the sky. And you didn't know I was watching every move you made. And was that when you... Yes, that's when. And then it got worse. I met you at the funeral and it was even worse. And now it's hell. Hell? Yes, it's hell. We're getting nowhere. You mean I'm wasting your time? What a joke. You come round and waste my time by telling me I'm wasting yours. What the hell do you expect from me? Sympathy? You know, I think we're getting to know each other. We're not so unlike underneath. You're right. We're horribly alike. You've succeeded in making a spy of me. Mind, either come through or go back. What are you doing? It's raining. It's not going to stop. Have you far to go? 
Depends where I go. Where do you live? Oh, always two or three places where I can turn in. Where do you keep your razor? I've got more than one razor. <sighs> that air's good. I needed a breath of air. Breathe it. For as long as you like. Stay with me. You breathe too. And feel you breathing. I'm tired. Leave your parcel to me. I'll deal with it. Listen, if I wanted to find you, how would I find you? Don't worry about finding me. I'll be in touch. You don't think I want to go? I don't. In fact, I dread it. It's simply business for Roderick. It isn't a matter of feeling. Isn't dread of feeling? Someone's got to go. He can't. I must. Someone's got to look at the place. The roof. Uh -huh. All that. Oh, really, Robert? I've been through more than enough convincing the passport office. Do I have to go through it all over again with you? The passport office is not in love with you. Weeks ago, you agreed I would have to go. Did I? Oh, yes, I suppose I did. Has anything changed since then? Changed? No, nothing's changed. Afternoon. I am Mrs. Tringsby. You're not Mr. Rodney, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, dear. I had expected you to be rather older and not quite so early. However, do by all means come into the dining room. We are not making difficulties, but please remember what happened last time. Last time? Last time she had a visitor. It was such a dreadful shock to us all. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. In fact, I'm sure Cousin Francis would want me to apologize. He should never have come. This dear room will never quite feel the same to me again. Oh, that sort of thing doesn't happen twice. And the army could tell you I'm as sound as a bell. Yes, that's another thing. I mean, you're coming down here in uniform. We are so careful here not to have dreadful thoughts. You won't on any account talk to Mrs. Morris about the war, will you? Just a light chat. And never, of course, mention the past. She may not know who you are. I relied on you to tell her. Oh, I told her. I was expecting Victor Rodney's son. Has he not come? He's standing just outside the door, my dear. Well, why doesn't he come in? Cousin Nettie. I shall be just downstairs. Just downstairs. Thank you, Mrs. Tringsby. I expect you would never have the patience to do this. No, I expect not. But you must have patience to have come such a long journey. It's such a long way to here. Oh, not so very long. 
Not from where I came from. Oh. I thought it was too far for anybody to come. Are you called Victor, too? No, Roderick. Roderick. I'm so glad you're not called Victor. I shall call my son, whenever I have one, Francis. Oh, he would be so pleased. What a pity he's dead. It's because he's dead that I've come. Do you know Cousin Francis left Mount Morris to me? Mount Morris? Poor unfortunate house. Poor thing. So there it is after all this time. And here I am. I wanted to ask... No, you mustn't ask. I cannot come back. I, I told him again and again, and I told them, and I'm telling you, everywhere is better without me. I cannot come back. I wish you could have seen him when he was a young man. Head and shoulders above the rest of them. And there could have been a different story. I could. But there wasn't. So in the end, he had to go out looking for a son. <coughs> Thank you, Hilda. Sandwiches for the gentleman. Will you have a sandwich? Cousin Nettie, I have decided that I want to live at Mount Morris. I'm not asking you to come back. All I'm saying is I shall consider the house as much yours as mine. Day after day at Mount Morris was sinking further down a well. It became too much for me. But how could I say so? I couldn't help seeing what was the matter. What he wanted me to be was his wife. I tried this, that and the other. Till the result was I fell into such a terrible melancholy. I only had to think of anything for it to go wrong. Nature hated us. Once the fields noticed me with him, the harvests began to fail. So I took to going nowhere, but up and down stairs till I met my own ghost. Parachutists. In case of parachutists landing at Mount Morris, detain, if possible, birds Absolutely. in chimney. Do not light fire. Locks and hinges. My method of oiling. Clocks. Grandfather on stairs. Weekly with key hidden under stair carpet. Telegrams. My death or other bad news, contact Mr. J. Blythe, lawyer.
This has been a bare sort of time for us, ma'am, with neither master. And it's a poor welcome for you, I fear. But indeed, you're welcome. Thank you. We killed a little chicken for your supper. How nice. Uh, will you see your room? Are there candles? There are two candles above. They'll be here from the surveyors in about half an hour, madam. Oh, right. Donovan, is there a boat? My son wants to know if there is a boat. Ah, uh, well, no, there was a boat until the master sank her. He had the boys out one morning loading rock into her until she went down. But why did he do that? Uh, Mr. Robertson's advice. I think he thought the Germans might be landing here and that they would fancy the use of a boat. Mr. Robertson? Uh, some name of that sort. He came from over. Whether he was a mister or a captain, we never made out. What did he look like? A heavy sort of a man, with maybe a kind of discord between his two eyes. A soft spot. In a day. Come up with you, ma'am. The day is famous. It's a beautiful day, in any event. Up for the day. 
We're just dropping her off with a friend, that's all. Five minutes. Do you love me? Why? Then nothing matters. Driver! Rodney, you must be dead. Not quite. How was the Emerald Isle? Plenty of eggs and bacon? It's rather strange. They had no blackout. Didn't actually know there's a war on. Yes. But they know they're not in it. Robert, the driver does know we're going to Earl's Court, I take it. Of course. You told him? I told him. I didn't hear you tell him. You seem so fussed at the Euston station. However... Oh, God. Have you lost something? I hope to heaven I haven't. I thought you were asleep. So did I. What were you doing? Thinking? No. Just... It must be somewhere. I'm sure I put it in my handbag this morning. If I didn't, I should be shot. Ha! Huh? Got it. Scoundrel. Thank heaven for that. Thinking what? What? I was asking Stella what she was thinking. I'm so glad you found it. Why should she tell you? I really don't know why she's not allowed to think in peace. Ask no questions and you'll be told no lies. Where are we? Has anyone any idea? Hey, it's Earl's Court. Driver? He knows. Thank you. See you are. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Annie. What do you think she lost? Hmm? And then found in her handbag. I have the foggiest idea. Whatever it was, what a relief she found it. You've never told me... What? You've never told me what she was like when she was young. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't just be alone with you all at once. It was a shock seeing you abused. It's a shock. I'm just thrown. I'll be all right. Let me know. I know you've been all by yourself in that house, but all the same. I feel jealous. As though somehow you've been with some sort of enemy of mine. Or rival. So far, the best thing has been touching your coat. I know where I am with your coat. It's just the same. You have no enemy anywhere in me. Why should you have to say that? My darling, who could like to feel less welcome than her own coat? But I want to welcome you. Totally. You haven't let me. Give me a cigarette. months ago, nearly two months ago, somebody came to me with a story about you. They said you were passing information to the enemy. I what? They said you were passing information to the enemy. I didn't... I didn't know what to think. What an extraordinary woman you are. Why? What would an ordinary woman have thought? What would an ordinary woman have done? Well, I don't know, really. What did you do? Nothing. It's not true, is it? Two months ago. Two months? There's certainly nothing like thinking a thing over. Or did it simply happen to slip your mind until tonight? Why didn't you just come and ask me then? What would have been wrong with that? Or was that too simple? Or 
analysis. A man called Harrison. A man called Harrison. It isn't true, is it? It can't be true that you're asking me the question. What do you want me to say? There's nothing to say. The whole thing's so completely unreal to me. I can't believe it isn't as unreal to you. It must be. Yes, it is. But what you're asking me isn't the point. It's immaterial. Crazy, out of a thriller. Am I passing information to the enemy? No, of course not. How could I be? Why should I? What do you take me for? What do I take you for? How well you've acted with me for the last two months. Could you? I ask you again, why didn't you come to me two months ago and tell me then? He said it would be dangerous to you to tell you. What he says then cuts a good deal of ice. In fact, you acted on the assumption that it was true. I didn't act. I didn't know what to do. I loved you. How strange that word sounds. Oh, my darling, for God's sake, this is breaking my heart. Is it? Am I? Are you just saying so? How do you expect me to know what's true? So you've been watching me for two months. I must be going blind. I loved you. No. It's the appearance of love that you keep up so beautifully. No. No. <laughs> well, I suppose I owe you an apology. Yes. I suppose you do. I'm shocked, too, you know. Until I heard my own words and heard you hear them, I really had no idea how horrible. Forgive me. Robert? Yes? I'm listening to you. Say something. You don't seem to have shown any great patriotic fervor. Must have been strange, Ireland. Yes. It was the light as much as anything else. Mm. Dublin was a blaze of light as the ship came in. It was dazzling, frightening. And at the house, there were oil lamps in the windows, you know, naked windows. It was strange, yes. One night, I went into the drawing room. I walked up and down it and imagined Roderick's wife in it one day. Why not, after all? Roderick's wife. And in the library, there was a picture of the Titanic hanging crooked in a corner. Stella. Yes? Talking of that, why shouldn't we marry? Talking of the Titanic? No, talking of Roderick. If anyone's to marry, why not us? You and me? Yes. Why not? We've got in the way of not marrying, I suppose. Yes, but why not? Why not? You know, it's really quite simple. The reason I want to marry you is that I want to marry you. I made up my mind when you were in Ireland. The fact is, I can't bear you out of my sight. But I hardly ever am. I'm not so sure as I used to be about that. You think I run into trouble? I think you do a bit, yes. You think I need looking after? Your friend, what's his name, must think so. Why do you call him what's his name? His name is Harrison. It's an easy name to remember. Harrison. But how have I need looking after, too? Do you think that perhaps you and I have never quite been our ages? I thought it had all been perfect. Yes, it all seemed perfect. There must have been a catch in it somewhere. There's only one solution. Marry me. 
It's not such a new idea. It's not such a wild idea. You've made it sound wild. You're contradicting yourself. First you said you made up your mind when I was in Ireland. Then you said you feel forced to ask me because of what I said in the car. That it suddenly seems necessary for you to keep me under your eye. Also, and I understand all of this, that I owe some balm to your offended honor. Well, that's how you make it sound. That the very least I can do is marry you to prove to you I'm convinced that anything more I may possibly hear about you can't be true. So any reasons I may have of my own to hesitate go by the board, don't you see? Look, I was clear enough. Let's get this straight. The fact that I want to marry you has nothing to do with what you said in the car. If Ernie hadn't been sitting waiting, I'd have asked you the moment I saw you on the platform. I'm not saying that what happened later didn't have an effect on you. Of course it did. It made me more certain it was time we married. The idea of anyone who likes coming along and frightening you is appalling. Yes, I was hurt too. How could I hide that? How could I not be? But more to the point, for the moment, the whole of our love seemed futile. If I couldn't keep you from that fantastic thing. Yes, it was fantastic. But you were frightened. Yes. Yes. For me, but also of me a little. It was simply... Do you love me? Just anybody can frighten me, you know. I wish you'd find out who Harrison is. Is he anybody? Welbeck 1428, hello. Darling, it's me. I'm sorry, damn it, I can't make tonight. I have to go down to Home Dean. A family convocation, red alert. My mother's had an offer for the house. Thrown them completely. I have Oh, I'll have a quiet night. I'll ring you tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. Two light ales, please. And what about food? See anything you like? Cold cuts and salad, fish? Wait, I'll tell you what. Let's see if they can do something different. After all, this is an occasion. For me, anyway. Just the job. Mission accomplished. What is it? A secret. I'm not very hungry. Well, no worry. It's just very nice for me to be your escort. Cheers. Cheers. Mind you, 
I still have to scold you, I'm afraid. Oh? Why? You've done what I told you not to. What's that? You've been naughty. Really? Yes, really. Also rash. One of these days, you'll be getting some of us into trouble. Don't look blank. You know very well what you've done. You tipped him off, didn't you? Come on, admit it. I mean, if I've got this wrong, you can always tell me to go to hell. Why don't you tell me to go to hell? Perhaps you're growing on me. You know, you're not as bright as I thought. Who? Oh? No. When I told you at the very beginning that I should know if you tipped him off, you really should have believed me. You see, I not only know that you have, I can tell you when. I can tell you the very day, or rather, the very night. Two lobsters. Lovely. This was my secret, my innocent secret. There's no such thing as an innocent secret. Would you like lobster, I hope? Oh, yes. I like it very much. I'm glad. Looks fresh, doesn't it? It does look fresh. What makes you think you can tell me the day or the night? Well, because on the morning after, he altered his course. He behaved, in fact, exactly into the letter the way I told you to behave. The moment he knew there was someone on his tracks. That's what I said he'd do. That's what he's done. I know you told him. When? The night you got back from Ireland. Well. Well. Someone has recognized you. What? A friend of yours. Don't be silly. At the bar. What you've done is this. You've put us all on the spot, you see. Thanks to you, our friend has pretty well dished himself. The only case for leaving him loose was the chance that he might lead us on to something bigger. Now that's out. So the case for leaving him loose falls down. That's what it's up to me to report. So will you? I've got myself to think of too, you know. And the country. So far, who besides you knows this? Only I know. It still has to go up. And you wouldn't be telling me this if it had gone up. Is that right? It's not doing any harm. It's bothering you. It won't bite. I wish it would. What were we saying? You know what we were saying. I know what you were about to say, yes. That at last, now, it really is up to me. That I either buy out Robert for a bit longer, or... Excuse me, just after my dog. Come along, come on, spot, bad boy, bothering people. Hello, I haven't seen you in the park for ages. I'm never there. You must have been there once, I saw you there. Fancy seeing you here. Excuse me, interrupting. It's on account of spot. Bad boy. You're not interrupting. Why do you call your dog Spot? He hasn't got any. Because he's my friend's dog, actually. I was going to meet her in this cafe, but I think I've come to the wrong place. I'm in the wrong cafe. Well, you better buzz off home and take your dog. He's taken quite a fancy to you, hasn't he? They always say a dog knows. Why don't you sit down? Oh, For I... a minute. I don't think I should, really. Oof. For one thing, you were talking. Oh, we were only deciding something. My friend's not here. Wish I knew where we were. I have no idea where we are. Where are we? What the war's for, isn't it? I'm sorry. You mustn't mind him. You mustn't blame him. It's been my fault. He's in trouble, too. This evening was to have been a celebration. The first of many more evenings. It may still be the first of many more evenings, but what will they be worth? I don't know. Well, 
I'll be off. Good night. Say good night to him. I don't know his name. Harrison. You must congratulate me before you go. I've good news, I think. You have? Yes. A friend is out of danger. Why don't you two both go along together? But... You hear what I said? You two have both better be getting along. But... What? But... We don't know where we are. Turn right, first left. We're in Regent Street. I don't understand. What has been decided? I thought we... What have you decided? What are you going to do? Pay the bill. Let's sum up. A. We don't know if we want to sell. B. If we do, how much more than the offer do we hope to get? C. Again, if we do sell, where are you both to go? I'm afraid it is not so simple as that. Well, Dickens feels there must be something behind the offer. What's behind the offer is that someone wants to buy the house. Who can want to buy a house they haven't seen? How do you know they haven't seen it? Well, no one has been to the door. You can see the house from a little way down the drive. We do not care for people coming down the drive. Why can't they come to the door and openly ring the bell? Creeping and spying about? No one is going to rush us. We did not ask these people to buy the house. But we left for sale on the agent's books for years. Nevertheless, this is our home. In that case, we turn them down. But it is too large. In that case, we jack them up. I'm afraid it's not so simple as that. You talk, Robert, as though this was just a business transaction. It always has been too large and too expensive. Your father made a mistake, one of many. Could you actually be happy in something smaller? It's not a question of happiness. It's a question of the future. That is for you and Ernestine. I have had my life. I hope I've done my best. But you must not expect me to be with you for long. Mutikins, don't say such dreadful things. It'll be for me. after another. Ernestine has not been able to take her hat off. Well, aren't we to sell or not? Do we want to? Well, can't always be thinking of what one wants. I have never thought of what I wanted. Don't forget this house is to be left to you both jointly. If you do not care for that, you had better say so. Of course we care. How can I ever forget this is my home? And how can I? And so, what is your advice? Sell. <laughs> Robert does not remember anything about his life. There you are quite wrong, Mutikins. He talks like a man. Who's that? Me, Uncle Robert. Anne? Want to see any, please? Both of you ought to be sound asleep. Peter is. Granny does not care for people creeping about in the middle of the night. I know. But don't say I know to Granny. <coughs> Robert, you encourage her. No, she encourages me. Can you stay here tonight? No. Got anything to tell me? Um, I was top at mental arithmetic. You can tell Uncle Robert all about that next time. No, really, Ernie. Well, then, a moment. Only a moment, mind. How many moments are there? How long compared to a minute is a moment? That depends. Ow! The telephone is never for anybody but Ernestine. What is the matter, Robert? Do answer it. Knocking the child over. Oh, need we have all that ringing? Will someone answer it? I will. Ah, no. Is it for Robert? Does anyone 
one know you're here? If it's for me, say I'm on my way back to London, will you? But you're here. There. You see? If it should turn out to be important, I shall always blame myself. Now, Anne, to bed. Are you going to London? Yes. You're always going away. Always. <laughs> You're giving me a crick in my back. You must grow taller. Just one more. And if I am, if that is what I am doing, because it has been that all the time. We should have to try to understand each other all over again. It's too late now. Too late in the night? Too late. Why are you against this country? Country? Yes. There are no countries, nothing but names. What sort of country do you think exists outside this room? Exhausted shadows dragging themselves to fight. How long can they drag the fight out? We've come out on the far side of that. We? We who are ready for the next thing. Are you against me? You're the one who's against. But not this country, you say. Then what are you against? The racket. What racket? Freedom. Freedom to be what? Muddled, mediocre, damned. Look at your free people. Mice let loose in the middle of the Sahara. It's unsupportable. Tell a man he's free. You know what that does to him? It sends him scuttling back into the womb. Look at it. Look at your mass of free suckers. Look at your democracy. Kidded along from the cradle to the grave. One in a thousand may have what it takes to be free. If so, he has what it takes to be something better. And he knows it. Who would want to be free when he could be strong? We must be strong. There must be law. But you break the law. No. Not the real law, not the true law. Come back. Do you feel I've been apart from you? There's been you and me and everything I've done. Why didn't you talk to me? I couldn't involve you. How could I? And how was I to tell you? How? You could have just let me know. Sometimes I thought I had. There were times it seemed impossible you didn't know. I found myself waiting for you to speak, and when you didn't, I thought you had decided silence was better. I thought, yes, silence is better. But I didn't know that you didn't know until you asked me. <sighs> Why did you? What made you have to? Such ideas to have. Why? I didn't choose them. They marked me out. They're not mine. I'm theirs. Haven't I a right to my own side? It is enough to have been in action once on the wrong side. You don't know the disgust of Duncan. An army of freedom queuing up to be taken off by pleasure boats. That was the end of that war. What was left? I never knew you before then. Before you were wounded. I was born wounded. My father's son. Dunkirk was waiting there in this race. Were you never frightened to do what you were doing? It undid fear. It 
bred my father out of me. It gave me a new heredity. I was living. I was under orders. So you're with the enemy? They're facing us with what has got to be the conclusion. They may not last, but it will. It's not just that they're the enemy, but that they're horrible, unthinkable, grotesque. In birth, anything is grotesque. Roderick may be killed. Roderick may be killed. I have not been in what you've done. The more I understand it, the more I hate it. I hate it! I should never have let you come here. This will be the first place. Last night at home, Dean, I was in terror of never seeing you again. I knew I was in danger, but I'd never pictured a rest before. I suddenly did. What a place to be taken in. I wonder how they got onto me. I wonder what I did. What I didn't think of. I was so careful. It had become second nature. If I had slept with Harrison, could he have saved you? What, did he say so? Naturally, he would. You didn't try. I thought I would last night. He sent me home. You left it pretty late. I left it late, yes. He sounds crazy. What a chance to take. What was to stop you turning him in? It would have been the end of him. It would have been the end of you, too. You know, for somebody doing something so definite, you talk so vaguely. Wildness and images. It's as though you haven't formulated everything in your mind. I've never talked about it before. Not even to your friends. You think we meet to swap ideas? Something's missing. You are out for the enemy to win because you think they have something. What? They have something. This war's just so much bloody quibbling about a thing that's predecided. Either side's winning would stop the war. Only their side's winning would stop the quibbling. I want order. I want shape. I want discipline. I want the cackle cut. I wish we could sleep. I must get dressed. Going? There may be someone outside the door. Yes. There has been a step. When? I didn't hear. And if it had been his step, I should have heard it. I should have known it before I heard it. Don't touch the curtain. I want to. I want to say, yes, he's here. We're here together. He's with me. I love him. I could let you out the back. If there's somebody at the front, there'll be someone at the back. That could depend on whether the somebody at the front is Harrison or not. Why? He's in love. 
be watching the house for his own reasons. People torment themselves. He's still what he is. Oh, you were mad to come here. I had to hold you in my arms once more. And I had to tell you. I came here to tell you, but I had to hold you in my arms first. I had to love you first. And then tell you. Would we ever have spoken if we hadn't known this was goodbye? This is goodbye. Isn't there a way out onto the roof? Yes. Yes, the skylight. You know it. But there could be somebody there. There could be somebody on the roof. There's one great thing about a roof. There's one sure way off it. It's steep. I wish you hadn't got your stiff knee. I wish I hadn't got my stiff knee. We've never danced, have we? I'll go by the roof. Come on. Take care of yourself. Now I'll get back into the flat and shut the door. Is this convenient? Where have you been? Come in. I was just sitting, listening to the guns. Yes. It has been quite some time since we met. I see you've got a cat. No, it belongs to next door. They're not there. It's nervous. It's a dirty night. Animals don't care for this sort of thing. How did you know where to find me? Oh, I heard you'd moved. What have you been doing? Well, I've been out of the country most of the time. You didn't lose your job, then? Whatever that affair you mean. No, no. No, no. I didn't lose my job. It's been so long since we had anything like this. I can't get used to it. You shouldn't be up here with all this heavy stuff. You should be in a shelter. You should be down in a shelter. Oh. You're not sorry I came anyway. Bit of company. I wish you'd come before. A long time ago. There was a time I had so much to say to you. I went on talking to you in my mind. So I clearly didn't think you were dead because 
You don't talk to the dead, you just listen to what they said over and over again. Try to piece it together. I missed you. Your dropping out left me with absolutely nothing. Why did you do it? I was switched. That was the long and short of it. I was switched. But when? What happened? After all, you killed Robert. Now, how do you make that out? Oh, you killed him. Why did you send me away that night? That night in the cafe? It wasn't going to work out. But if you hadn't gone, if you hadn't disappeared, who knows? But now we can say goodbye, can't we? We're not what we were. We're no longer two of three. We're apart. Goodbye. Yes. We had to meet again to say goodbye. Don't you understand, Harrison? That's the first time you've ever called me anything. I don't know your Christian name. You wouldn't care for it. Why? What is it? Robert. Listen, I think it's over, don't you? I think the raid's over. I'll stay till we're all clear. <laughs>